Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some of the new releases coming out in April. Alright everybody, I know that this video is a little bit late because by the time you're watching this, this is actually going to be posted on April 3rd and so that means the first Tuesday of the month and the first new releases will have already come out. I apologize about that but sometimes the end of month content is all kind of fighting for space and it doesn't always get out as promptly as I would like but I still hope that you will find this video useful. Now as a reminder, this video is just going to feature new releases that I think are of note that were not already mentioned in the book of the month prediction video. That video contains a bunch of new releases that are coming out in the month of April that I think could be featured as part of the monthly selections for book of the month. And so if you are interested in knowing a lot more of the releases that are coming out in April, please feel free to head on over to that video, which I will try to remember to leave linked down below for you. So we are going to go ahead and start with April 2nd, which will be yesterday as of the date that I'm filming this video, starting with Mary Kubica's newest release called She's Not Sorry. It says Megan Michaels is trying to find balance between being a single mom to a teenage daughter and working as a full-time nurse. While on duty at the hospital one day, a patient named Caitlin arrives in a coma with a traumatic brain injury having jumped from a bridge and plunging over 20 feet to the train tracks below. But when a witness comes forward with shocking details about the fall, it calls everything they know into question. Was Caitlin pushed? And if so, by whom and why? Megan has always tried to stay emotionally detached from her patients, but this time she mistakenly lets herself get too close until she's deeply entangled in Caitlin's and her family's lives. Only when it's too late does she realize that she and her daughter could be the next victims. That ultimately sounds kind of intriguing. I've only read one Mary Kubica and it was okay. It was nothing terrible, but it was definitely nothing mind-blowing. So I'm not necessarily incentivized to go ahead and pick up another book by her. I do know that she's a pretty well-known, well-loved mystery thriller author, and so that's why I wanted to go ahead and mention it in this video. Speaking of well-loved authors, we have the newest release by Sarah Adams coming out on the second called The Rule Book. This, again, is another author that I don't really have any experience with. She is well-beloved in the romance community, but I've kind of stayed clear of her just because I think she probably writes cutesy rom-coms, and that's not typically my vibe. But I do know from what I hear that she's pretty closed door, so these are not going to be super spicy if that's your thing. So this sounds like it's going to be a spoiler sports romance, a second chance sports romance. It says, Nora McKenzie's entire career lies in the hands of famous NFL tight end Derek Pender, who also happens to be her extremely hot college ex-boyfriend. Nora didn't end things as gracefully as she could have back then, and now it's come back to haunt her. Derek is her first client as an official full-time sports agent, and he's holding a grudge. Derek has set his sights on a little friendly revenge. Nora McKenzie, the first girl to ever break his heart, wants to be his agent. Oh, he'll let her be his agent. Plan is to make Nora's life absolutely miserable. But if Derek knows anything about the woman he once loved, she won't quit easily. Instead of giving in, Nora starts a scheme of her own. Then a wild night in Vegas leads to Nora and Derek in bed the next morning married. With their rule book out the window, could this new relationship be the thing to save their careers? Like I said, it sounds like it's going to be a cute fun time. So if you have enjoyed Sarah Adams in the past, please be on the lookout for this new book that is coming out on April 2nd. An April 2nd release that I am personally very excited for is the newest release by Holly Jackson called The Reappearance of Rachel Price. Now y'all know that I've moved firmly away from YA, but I still continue to go back to Holly Jackson just because I think her YA thrillers are so well crafted and well written and this one sounds like it's going to be phenomenal as well. This follows 18 year old Belle who has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mom's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago Rachel Price vanished and young Belle was the only witness but she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone long presumed dead and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. But the case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agree to a true crime documentary. Belle can't wait for filming to end for life to go back to normal and then the impossible happens. Rachel Price reappears and life will never be normal again. Rachel has an unbelievable story about what happened to her. Unbelievable because Belle isn't sure it's real. If Rachel is Lying, then where has she been all this time? And could she be dangerous? With the camera still rolling, Belle must uncover the truth about her mother and find out why Rachel Price really came back from the dead. Like I said, I think that sounds absolutely phenomenal. Unlike the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, which features a podcast, this is going to feature a true crime documentary, which I absolutely love the sound of. I'm really interested in digging deeply into the mystery of what actually happened to her mother, where she's been all this time, why has she returned? So this sounds fascinating to me, and I will certainly be getting to this at some point in the near future, because this is definitely an anticipated release for me, for sure. And then the very final April 2nd release that I want to talk to you about today is called The Cemetery of Untold Stories by Julia Alvarez. It says, Alma Cruz, the celebrated writer at the heart of The Cemetery of Untold Stories, doesn't want to end up like her friend, a novelist who fought so long and hard to finish a book that it threatened her sanity. So when Alma inherits a small plot of land in the Dominican Republic, her homeland, she has the beautiful idea of turning it into a place to bury her untold stories, literally. She creates a graveyard for the manuscript drafts and the characters whose lives she tried and failed to bring to life and who still haunt her. Alma wants her characters to rest in peace, but they have other ideas and soon begin to defy their author. They 
talk back to her and talk to one another behind her back, rewriting and revisiting themselves. Philomena, a local woman hired as the groundskeeper, becomes a sympathetic listener to the secret tales unspooled by Alma's character. The Cemetery of Untold Stories asks, whose stories get to be told and who's buried? Julia Alvarez reminds us that the stories of our lives are never truly finished, even at the end. So that sounds very interesting. It definitely sounds like there's going to be a speculative element to it. It also sounds like there's going to be some social commentary, possibly regarding the erasure of a lot of people's histories. That sounded really fascinating to me. I don't know necessarily if this is personally on my radar to pick up, but I think that a lot of people could get some enjoyment out of this, and that's why I wanted to mention it here. And then again, as of the posting of this video, the books that I just talked about are already released, so they should be out and available for you to purchase if you are interested, and I will have all of those linked down below. All right, then moving on into April 9th, we actually have a new release by CJ Tudor. She is the author best known for The Chalk Man, and the newest release is called The Gathering. In small Alaska town, a boy is found with his throat ripped out and all the blood drained from his body. The inhabitants of Dead Heart haven't seen a killing like this in 25 years, but they know who's responsible. A member of the colony, an ostracized community of vampires living in an old mine settled deep in the woods. Detective Barbara Atkins, a specialist in vampire killings, is called in to officially determine if this is a colony killing and authorize a call. Okay, so this is actually a paranormal thriller. It says old suspicions die hard in a town like Dead Heart, but Barbara isn't so sure. Determined to find the truth, she enlists the help of a former Dead Heart sheriff, Jensen Tucker, whose investigation into the previous murder almost cost him his life. Since then, Tucker has become a recluse, but he knows the colony better than almost anyone. As the pair delve into the town's history, they uncover secrets darker than they could have imagined, and then another body is found. While the snow thickens and the nights grow longer, a killer stalks Dead Heart and two disparate communities circle each other for blood. Time is running out for Atkins and Tucker to find the truth. Are they hunting a bloodthirsty monster or a twisted psychopath? And which is more dangerous? All right, so that actually sounds really interesting to me. I honestly was not that impressed by the Chalk Man. I know a lot of people really enjoyed it, but it was just kind of meh and blah to me. And I honestly really had no interest in continuing with CJ Tudor, but I'm really liking the paranormal aspect to this. And I'm definitely loving the isolated, like wintry thriller vibes that I'm getting from this as well. So this is definitely one that I could consider picking up for sure. Also on the ninth, we have a book called The Vacancy in Room 10 by Serafina Nova Glass. When Anna Hartley's husband, Henry, calls her with a terrible guilty confession. She can't believe what she hears. It has to be a bad joke. The mild, predictable artist she married would never hurt a fly, let alone commit a murder. But her confusion turns to horror when police find his body washed up on the banks of the Rio Grande. Desperate for answers to the millions of questions his untimely death has raised, Anna checks into the Sycamores, the rundown motel turned apartment Henry rented as an art studio. As she absorbs every bit of gossip the eclectic mix of residents are willing to share about her husband and each other, she begins to piece together a picture of a very different man than the one she married and the life he led behind her back. The more she learns and the less sense things seem to make, she finds herself wondering, did she ever really know Henry at all? But Henry's secrets aren't the only ones. As Anna's search for clues expand, Cass, the mysterious jaded motel manager, seems more and more determined to keep Anna in the dark. And when threatening letters start appearing at her door, Anna has to decide what's more important, the truth or her own safety. I'm really liking the vibes of this. I absolutely love a story that features a husband living a double life and the wife who is left to kind of uncover it. I'm really hoping that Serafina is able to do a twist on the story and make it very engaging and intriguing because there have been some books kind of like The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave that really just fell flat and were really overall like unoriginal and just kind of meh. But I would be interested in checking this one out for sure. If you have read anything by this author, please let me know if you think that this one might be worthy of checking out because I am definitely intrigued by it. A really fun sounding book that is coming out on the 9th is called The Fellowship of Puzzle Makers by Samuel Burr. This sounds like it's going to be a really unique, fun, interesting time. It says Clayton Stumper might be 26 years old, but he dresses like your grandpa and drinks sherry like your aunt. Abandoned at birth on the steps of the Fellowship of Puzzle Makers, he was raised by a group of eccentric enigmatologists and now finds himself among the last survivors of a fading institution. When the esteemed crossword compiler and main maternal presence in Clayton's life, Pippa Allsbrook, passes away, she bestows her final puzzle on him, a promise to reveal the mystery of his parentage and prepare him for life beyond the walls of the commune. As Clay begins to unpick the clues, he uncovers something even the Fellowship have never been able to solve, and it's a secret that has the potential to change everything. So I'm actually digging the vibes of this. This sounds like it's going to be more cozy mystery than anything, which isn't typically my thing, but I love the idea of having to solve a puzzle to get to the end of the mystery. So this one is actually one that is definitely on my radar. It is already on my wish list, already on my TBR, and I'm excited for this one to come out. And then the very final one that I want to mention for April 9th is actually a sequel. It is the sequel to The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This is called The Hemlock Queen. This is like a new adult fantasy series, but in all honesty, it kind of read a little bit more YA than new A. It definitely wasn't anything super complicated. I feel like it was okay overall, but I don't necessarily think I will be continuing in the series. But if you are interested in continuing in the series, like I said, this sequel is coming out on the 9th. I'm not going to read a synopsis of this just because I don't want to risk giving spoilers, but just be on the lookout for this one coming out next week on the 9th. Moving on into April 16th, I actually only have one notable release that I wanted to talk to you about, and it's the newest release by Alyssa Cole called One of Us Knows. Now, I'm going to need your opinions on this because I know that Alyssa Cole is kind of well known also for her romance, but she does have a couple of thrillers under her belt that I've heard 
really good things about, but I've kind of been hesitant to pick up her thrillers just because I think that's a huge genre shift between romance and thrillers. So you're gonna have to let me know if you have read Alyssa Cole's thrillers and what you think of them. It says, years after a breakdown and a diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder derailed her historical preservationist career, Kenitria Nash and her alters have been given a second chance they can't refuse, a position as resident caretaker of a historic home. Having been dormant for years, Ken has no idea what led them to this isolated Hudson River Island, but she's determined not to ruin their opportunity. Then a surprise visit from the home's conservation trust, just as a nor'easter bears down on the island, disrupts her newfound life, leaving Ken trapped with a group of possibly dangerous strangers, including the man who brought her life tumbling down years earlier. When he turns up dead, Ken is the prime suspect. Caught in a web of secrets and in a race against time, Ken and her alters must band together to prove their innocence and discover the truth of Cavanaugh Island and their own past, or they risk losing not only their future, but their life. So this is definitely interesting because we're going to be following our main character, but also her multiple personalities that she has. So it sounds like each of them is probably going to have their own perspective and their own thoughts, which is unique. I don't necessarily know if I've ever seen a book do that before. It also sounds like this is going to be an isolationist thriller. They are going to be trapped on this island during a storm. So there are definitely some common tropes that we're seeing in this book as well. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the synopsis, but it certainly sounds unique. So let me know what you think about this one. All right, moving on into the 23rd. Again, I only have one release to talk about, but it is perhaps one of the most notable releases coming out in April. And that is Funny Story by Emily Henry. We all know that Emily Henry has pretty much cemented herself in the romance genre as a queen of romance. And I'm really liking the synopsis of this one because it sounds very messy and complicated. So this synopsis is actually pretty long and I don't want to read the whole thing. But from what I understand, this follows our main character, Daphne, who was engaged to a man named Peter until Peter dumped her for his childhood best friend named Petra. And so now she's kind of alone. She's stranded. And now she's seeking to be roommates with the only person that can really understand what she's going through. And that's Petra's ex, Miles. So it sounds like Petra dumped Miles to be with Peter and Peter dumped Daphne to be with Petra. So as you can see, it's a little bit messy, definitely a little bit complicated. And they become roommates. And it says the roommates mainly avoid one another until one day while drowning their sorrows, they form a tenuous friendship and a plan. If said plan also involves posting deliberately misleading photos of their summer adventures together, well, who could blame them? But it's all just for show, of course, because there's no way Daphne would actually start her new chapter by falling in love with her ex fiance's new fiance's ex, right? So I'm actually really digging this. I think it's going to be a really good fun time. Emily Henry just has a way of having really deep, thoughtful conversations within her stories. And I'm expecting this to be no different. So again, this is coming out on the 23rd. All right. And then we are moving on into the very final week of releases, which is April 30th. And we are going to start with The Library of Borrowed Hearts by Lucy Gilmore. You might recognize the name Lucy Gilmore because she actually wrote The Lonely Hearts Book Club, which I read, I think it was last year at some point. And overall, I liked it. I thought it was cute. It didn't really hit me in the feels like I wanted it to, but I would be willing to read more from her again. And like I said, this is her newest release that is coming out. But it says librarian Chloe Sampson has been struggling to take care of her three younger sisters to find herself to make ends meet. She's just about at the end of a rope when she stumbles across a rare edition of a book from the 1960s at the local flea market. Deciding it's a sign of her luck turning, she takes it home with her only to be shocked when her cranky hermit of a neighbor swoops in and offers to buy it for an exorbitant price. Intrigued, Chloe takes a closer look at the book only to find notes scribbled in the margins between two young lovers back when the book was new, one of whom is almost definitely Jasper Holmes, the curmudgeon next door. And when she begins following the clues left behind, she discovers this isn't the only old book in town filled with the romantic marginalia. This kickstarts a literary scavenger hunt that Chloe is determined to see through to the end. What happens to the two tragic lovers who corresponded in the margins of so many different library books? And what does it have to do with the old sad man next door, who only now has just begun to open his home to Chloe and her siblings? In a romantic tale that spans the decades, Chloe discovers that there's much more to her neighbor than meets the eye. And in allowing herself to accept the unexpected friendship he offers, she learns that some love stories begin in the unlikeliest of places. So I, that actually sounds really, really beautiful. I definitely think that this is one that I would like to check out for sure. And then the very final release that I want to talk to you about in this video is the newest release by Geneva Rose called Home is Where the Bodies Are. This again is an author that I'm not familiar with. I haven't read any of her prior work, but I know that she's kind of like a TikTok sensation at this point. After their mother passes, three estranged siblings reunite to sort out her estate. Beth, the oldest, never left home. She stayed with her mom caring for her until the very end. Nicole, the middle child, has been kept at arm's length due to her ongoing battle with a serious drug addiction. Michael, the youngest, lives out of state and hasn't been back to their small Wisconsin town since their father ran out on them seven years before. While going through their parents' belongings, the siblings stumble upon a collection of home videos and decide to revisit those happier memories. However, the nostalgia is cut short when one of the VHS tapes reveals a night back in 1999 that none of them have any recollection of. On screen, their father appears covered in blood. What follows is a dead body and a pact between their parents to get rid of it before the video abruptly ends. Beth, Nicole, and Michael must now decide whether to leave the past in the past or uncover the dark secret their mother took to her grave. That sounds really interesting. Geneva Rose is another author that I would really like your opinion on. If you have read her before and you think that she is worth it, please let me know. I've heard very mixed things about her book, but I am intrigued by this one. So you'll have to let me know. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are some of the other new releases that are coming out in April that I am personally interested in or that I think you will be interested in. Once again, this list is not meant to be comprehensive 
comprehensive. It is just meant to showcase some of the more notable releases that are coming out in April that were not already featured in the book of the month prediction video. And then even then, I'm sure that I'm missing a ton of April new releases. So please feel free to leave any other April new releases that you know about down below so others can learn about them as well. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a videotape emoji in honor of the newest release by Geneva Rose. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.